So the algebra part, a variable, of course, is a symbol that stands for a number, uh, it, whether it's known or unknown. A term is a number variable or a product of a number and a variable, and they're separated by pluses and minuses, uh, or multiplying and dividing, things like that. Like terms have identical exponents and variables, and uh, num numerical coefficients are the numbers in front of the variables. So like on number 13 here, negative 16x is a term, 26x is a term. So they're separated by the plus, and so what the, uh, that means is since they both have the same variable, you can add them together. All right, now if one had an x and one had a y, you couldn't do nothing with it. But if they have the same variable, since they both have an x, you can add them together. So then it goes into your rules for you know, adding and subtracting integers. So it's negative 16 plus 26. That's the same thing as 26 minus 16. So there you go, 10x. Uh, same for the rest of it. So when you have more than two, it's better to take them just two at a time. So this one was initially uh, 2x minus 8x plus 5x. So, so I would, you know, I would just uh, start at the beginning because with the uh, order of operations, if you have adding and subtracting on the same line, you just do whichever one you come to first as you go left to right. So 2x minus 8x, that's going to make 6x, and then 6x plus 5x, or sorry, not 6x, negative 6x, I'm going too fast. Negative 6x plus 5x makes negative 1x, or just negative x. Now, this one here, 17, is a little tricky because you got three fractions. Now, if you're adding and subtracting fractions, you have to have a common denominator. Luckily, with this one, 12 is a common denominator of all this. So, <clears throat> you can say, all right, well, I'm going to leave that one alone to make 1 12th, 2 and 4. I multiplied 4 by 3, and I multiplied 2 by 6, so that's going to be 6 over 12, or negative 6 over 12 plus 9 over 12 uh, plus 1 half x. Then you can start doing them two at a time, like this. So negative 6 twelfths x plus 9 twelfths x makes 3 twelfths x, and then add the last one, 4 twelfths x, or um, let me zoom this out one-third x. All right? So anytime there's fractions, you have to, if, if they're adding and subtracting, you have to find a common denominator. All right, over here on 19, it initially said 8x minus x plus 10 minus 6. So what happened here is that you had two that have a have an x, and then you had two that had nothing. They didn't have an x, they didn't have any terms at all, or any variables at all. So these are terms with a variable, these are terms without a variable. These two are like terms, these two are like terms, but they are still different from the first two. So what you do then is you go ahead and say, all right, well let me do this circle part first, 8x minus x, that's 7x, and then let's do the rectangular part, 10, uh, 10 minus 6, which is just positive 4. Now, <clears throat> that leaves you with 7x plus 4, and that's as far as that'll go, because one has a variable, one does not. Since the variable's not being affected to both of them, you can't put them any further. So 7x plus 4 is as far as that one will go. Uh, because you don't know what x is, so you can't do anything else with it. Same thing for 23 down here. So 23, we had one with an x here, one with a y here. Let me do, actually, let me do this in a different color. Hold on, let's back it up. Okay. So we had, it might be too thick, let's see. So you have one with an x here in a yellow circle. You had one with a Y here in the blue uh, long rectangle. You had a, net, a minus 11 in the red tall rectangle. And then you had another X at the end, so we've got to go back 
to the yellow circle. So <clears throat> anything that can be put together, you do put together. And in this case, it's only these two. So you just look at it like it was saying um, 16x plus 21x, okay? So 16x plus 21x, that's 37x, which is gonna show up over here. And then none of the rest of this stuff can be put together, so you just drop it down as part of your answer, and that's as far as that one will go. So sometimes you can combine a lot of like terms, and in some cases it's just a couple. All right, let's look at another one. So over here we got some decimals this time. Same rules apply, all right? First one is 1.3x, so I'm gonna put that in the yellow circle. The second one is a plus 10, so I'm gonna put that in a blue square, close enough to a square. Minus 2.4x, that's another x, so I'm gonna go back to the same thing I put around that one. And then here's another one without a variable, so I'm gonna to try to put that in a blue box as well. So what happens here is the two yellow circles will go together and the two blue boxes will go together, but they won't go any further than that. So 1.3x minus 2.4x is gonna make negative 1.1x and then plus or positive 10 <clears throat> Sorry, positive 10 minus 3.6 will give us positive 6.4. So we'll just write that with a plus 6.4. So it turns out to be uh, negative 1.1x plus 6.4. That's as far as that'll go. So sometimes that happens. You just, since there's a, a variable on one that's not on the other one, that's it. That's as far as you can go with that one. I messed up my colors here. No. All right, so that's that page. And it's all, this is all about combining like terms. So the idea again behind combining like terms, put together what will go together. Anything that won't combine, just make sure that you keep it with you uh, all the way to the end. All right. All right, 10.2. The distributive property, you might remember this one, may have been a while. So the way that the distributive property works is you multiply, oops, that's not big enough at all. All right, you multiply the outside coefficient by both terms inside the parentheses and then finish with the order of operations, all right? So looking at number five. <clears throat> It said nine times three X minus two. Let me make this a little bit bigger. I don't think I made that big enough. There we go, number five. Okay, so distribu distributive property, again, the idea is distribute what's on the outside across both terms in the parentheses. Most of the time, it's gonna be one with a variable and one without. Sometimes they'll both have a variable, and sometimes they'll both have a variable, but each variable is different. So a lot of different ways to look at it. So this first one, we got nine times three X minus two. I draw these little spider legs from the nine to both of those numbers so that I know on this next step that I've got to multiply that nine by each one of those. And a good trick to follow is whatever operation was initially in that set of parentheses, just go ahead and bring it down and then you can worry about what sign it's going to get uh, later. All right, that way you don't lose track of anything. So 9 times 3x minus 2 turns into 9 times 3x minus 9 times 2. So then you do them individually and you get 27x minus 18 and there you go. You've multiplied that 9 by both terms inside the parentheses. Let's look at number seven because it deals with a negative number being multiplied on the outside of this. And we know negatives cause all kinds of trouble. So negative two times x plus y. All right, and that's all that's inside. One x, one y, 
So what's going to happen is that negative 2 will get distributed to the x and the y. So that's going to make negative 2x. Then you bring down your plus, And then uh, ne um, negative 2, I think I skipped a step. Let me back this up. Hold on. Yeah. So when you do that, is what, it, what it's really going to make is negative 2 times x plus negative 2 times y. Yeah, I forgot to put that step in there. So then, once you multiply the 2 by both of those, you get to this step here. Sorry. So negative 2 times x makes negative 2x. You bring the plus down, and then negative 2 times y makes negative 2y, which you can just use as a minus y. So then it becomes negative 2x plus negative 2y. If you have a plus negative, it simplifies just into a regular minus. So you can make it say negative 2x minus 2y. All right. Over here on number 9, we got some decimals flying around. So again, you're going to multiply negative 6 times negative 2.4 and negative 6 times positive 5y. So negative times a negative makes a positive, and then 6 times 2.4 makes 14.4x. Go ahead and bring the plus down with it. So we got a plus here. We're going to have a plus there. And then you're going to do negative 6 times positive 5. Well, that's going to make negative 30y. So you wind up with 14.4x plus negative 30y, which you can then simplify this part to just be a regular minus. If it had worked out to be a minus negative, you can just swap it out with a plus. All right. And we'll look at some more examples of that here in a little bit. I know those are kind of messy. These down here in the middle, it's the same thing happening. It's just sometimes when folks are presented with a distributive property problem, when the number being distributed is on the right side instead of the left side, it can mess folks up. So what I recommend is just rewriting them with this number over on the left and then just do what we just did. Those are there if you need them. They're kind of shorthanded, but they're there. All right. Ones like this. So 17, 19, and 21, you had three terms on the inside. Same thing, you're still going to take the outside number and multiply it by each of the numbers on the inside. So 4 times p, that's 4p. Bring down your plus. 4 times 9q, that's 36q. Bring down your minus. 4 times 10, that's 40. And there you go. 4p plus 36q minus 40. And that's one of those where that's as far as that can go because one's got a P, one's got a Q, one's got nothing, so you can't really do anything else with that. All right, fractions. <clears throat> this one, we have 3 times 1 fifth X plus 2 thirds Y minus 1 fourth. The positive 3 is getting distributed across all this. The best way to handle something like this, make that 3 a 1, or sorry, a 3 over 1, and then now it just turns into multiplying fractions. And the way you multiply fractions is you go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So 3 times 1 fifth becomes 3 fifths x. Sorry, 3 times 1 fifth x. I didn't read the whole thing. 3 times 1 fifth x makes 3 fifth x because, you know, you only multiply uh, the parts you need. 3 over 1 uh, times 2 thirds y make 6 thirds y. Don't forget to bring down your plus. All right. Once you've got the 6 thirds y, bring down your minus, and then 3 times 1 fourth is just going to be 3 fourths. So, they, uh, one has an x, one has a y, one has nothing. Can't really do anything with that. However, that 6 thirds y, you can simplify down to a 2, and that will, uh, you know, make it a little bit neater, so to speak. 21, same thing applying. It's just dealing with decimals. You do, we do have a negative times a negative situation right here. So negative 15 times negative 2a, that's going to make positive 30a. Then when we've got negative 15, oops, let's bring down that minus. We got negative 15 times... Uh, 3.2b, 
So that would be minus negative 48b, which I went ahead and made into a plus, just trying to save some steps. And then bring down that plus again, all right? So <clears throat> initially it would have been a plus, but negative 15 times 4.5 makes negative 67.5. So plus negative 67.5 just has it winding up in a minus. So I shorthanded that one quite a bit. Uh, Hopefully not too much, but uh, but uh, it's in there. So, yeah, distributive property can turn into a booger pretty quick, uh, especially when negatives are starting to get involved. So just, again, best thing to do is whatever the initial operation was in these, bring that down and then just multiply your outside value by that number, and then you should be all right. And then, you know, to, if, you're if you're combining anything, just follow your order of operations. Okie dokie. Last page out of the handwritten notes. Oh, stop it. Inverse operations. Okay. I never should have uploaded these as an image. I should have made them a PDF. Uh, <clears throat> ah, too late now. So inverse operations are when you use the opposite operations with the same... I can't even read my own handwriting. Inverse operations are when you use the opposite operations with the same absolute value to solve for a variable. I must have done this page in a hurry. So what happens is, like if we're looking at number five here, okay, what five initially said was why, ah, helps if I turn the marker on, y minus 12 equals 20. That was what it said initially. All right. Now, what you're doing is you're trying to solve for this y right here. Y likes to be three things. Y likes to be on the left side, likes to be by itself, and it likes to be positive if you can help it. And that's true for any of these variables that you're going to find, like on number seven, with it being x, or you know uh, any other variable. Now. If you can't get it on the left side every time, don't worry about it. That's more of like a slope intercept thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, my old math teachers were always like, put it on the left. I'm like, all right, fine. I'll do whatever you say. So <clears throat> it initially says y minus 12 equals 20. Inverse operations basically says do the opposite operation, which in this case would be a plus, with the same absolute value, which would be a 12, on both sides since it's an equation, and you'll solve it. So what you do, you say, all right, well, I'm trying to find this y. Right now, 12 is being taken away from it. So if I'm going to try to move this to the other side, I need to add 12 on both sides, OK? Need to add 12 on both sides. Negative 12 plus 12 zeroes out. That's the whole reason of doing that, all right? If you have negative 12 plus 12, and if you, look, like if you were to look at them on a number line, you know, negative 12 here, positive 12 here, put them together, you're going to wind up at zero. So that's the whole idea behind that. So over here on the right side is the important part with 20 plus 12. So you got a y, you got an equals, and you got a 20 plus 12. Bring all that down. So bring down your y, bring down your equals, and the 20 plus 12 makes 32. So your answer is y equals 32. Now I just thought of something. On the answer entries, I think if you are, it's been so long since I looked at it. I think that if you, like if you had this question and you typed in y equals 32, it should count it, but I don't know if it will. You're, you're almost better off just putting in the 32. We'll look at them, we'll look at them, just to, just to refresh my memory, because I can't remember for sure. Uh, all right, so one like number seven said x, it init the initial problem said x plus six equals 15. That was the initial problem, all right? So <clears throat> this one we did vertically, where we just moved one to one side and we were done. You can also do it horizontally if you so choose, okay? So like if you have x plus six equals 15, you're like, all right, well, I know I need that x. Right now, it's got a plus six on it. So if I want to zero it out, 
I'm going to have to subtract 6 from both sides, right? If I do positive 6 minus 6, that's gone. And then this new minus 6 showed up over here. So now we've got x equals 15 minus 6 for cleanup, right? So the x comes down, the equals comes down, and then 15 minus 6 makes 9. So that comes down into there, all right? By the way, uh, just a little bit of foreshadowing. These are uh, single step equations because we're not having to take care of any multiplying or dividing right now. We're only doing adding and subtracting. All right, well, let's look at nine. Nine is the same kind of deal. It's, it initially said x, ah, blasted marker. It initially said x plus 16 equals negative 2. That was the initial question. So then we want x by itself. It's got 16 being added to it right now. So we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. I'm just only showing the one on the right side. So now for cleanup, we're keeping our x, we're keeping our equals, and we're keeping the negative 2 minus 16. So bring all that down, x equals, and then negative 2 minus 16 makes negative 18. When you subtract from a negative, it makes it more negative. It pulls it further down that left side of the uh, number line. All right? So there's that one. Uh, I pulled 11, 13, and 15 out of that old book because your variable is not always going to be at the very beginning of the problem. So you have to know how to deal with that too. So if we look at 14, <clears throat> it, the initial problem said, uh, hold on, let me make this a little bit bigger for y'all. There we go. The initial problem said 14, yeah, my handwriting is terrible, plus x equals negative 11. That was the initial problem, all right? So we are still wanting x by itself, all right? We've got a positive 1x right there, so we want it by itself. Well, right now, it has a 14 being added to it, right? So to get rid of it, we will subtract 14 from both sides, all right? So that's going to leave us with our x. We're just going to bring it down. Our equals, we'll bring it down. And then negative 11 minus 14, again, when you subtract from a negative, it makes it more negative. So that will make negative 25. Now, I prefer to do these vertically. Most of the time, though, with single step equations, you can take care of it horizontally if you're doing it uh, shorthanded like this. Um, all right, so let's look at 13. The initial problem on 13 said negative, oh, let me switch back to my yellow here, negative 12 plus x equaled 7. <clears throat> that was the initial problem, all right? So again, we have positive 1x. If it were to say negative 1x, we would have an extra step because you'd have to divide the negative 1 off of it. Uh, but this positive, so we don't have to. So think of it as 12 being taken away from it. So I need to add 12 back to zero it out. And that's why this right side had a plus 12 on it. So I've got my x, I've got my equals, I've got 7 plus 12, which makes 19. So the answer for that one is x equals 19. All right. Same thing applies with decimals. This one, though, I picked it because x was actually on the right side. Now, I know at the beginning I said, you know, make sure you got your decimals on the left. That was just old school thought talking. Uh, ideally, you know, if it's an equation, it doesn't matter what side it's on, right? Because it's all equal. So this one initially said 5.2 equals x minus 4.6. 5.2 equals x minus 4.6. Our x, we want it by itself, right? Let's go ahead and keep our equals. x right now has 4.6 being taken away from it. So if we add 4.6 back to it, that goes away, 
And then right here on the next line is where I showed the 4.6 being added over here. Now, if you want to put it after the 5.2, you can. If you want to put it the, before the 5.2, you can. It'll work out fine. But 5.2 plus 4.6, that's going to give us our 9.8 equals x. All right, so those are all single step equations. You're only having to add or subtract or multiply and divide. Another example of a single step equation that we didn't have up here is if it said something like uh, 3x equals 15. All right, this is another example of it. So with this one, to solve that one for x, not, rather than adding and subtracting anything, you have to divide both sides by 3. And the reason why you're dividing is because 3x is shorthand for 3 times x, right? So in that case, you would divide both sides by 3. Keep your x, keep your equals, keep your 15 divided by 3. x equals 5. Another type, <clears throat> if I can squeeze it in here, would be one that said something like x over 5 equals 20. All right. This time, x is being divided by 5, right? So since x is being divided by 5, we are going to multiply both sides by the, uh, by the 5 over 1. Because it's, it's technically one-fifth times x, but, you know, when you divide by a fraction, you flip it over, multiply by it, yada, yada, yada. So <clears throat> what happens here is fives cancel out. We got x over 1, which is just x, and then 20 divided by, or sorry, 20 times 5 gives us 100. So those are multiplication single-step ones, and we'll probably see more of those later on. Hopefully I'm just getting ahead of myself and didn't just, you know, totally forget to include these in these notes. But uh, you never know with me. All right. So there, uh, did anybody need to jot those down? They're on the video. I'll, I'll upload the video later so you can catch them later. All right. Two-step equations. Okay. So let's look at 29. Okay. These are really more than two-step equations. They're multi-step equations, but they're not bad. So, the initial problem here said 3x, let me try something, because I, I thought that yellow was showing up good, but let's try this one. The initial problem said 3x minus 5 equals 2x plus 9. All right, that was the initial problem. So, to kind of make this easier, what you have to do is you want to do your combine like terms step. Okay? Combine like terms. Alright? So when you combine like terms, what happens is you're putting all the terms with the same variable on one side and then all the terms that do not have a variable on another side. If you put everything on one side, it's not going to work. You're just wasting time. So, <clears throat> what I always try to do, and this is where the old teachings come in, is I always try to put variables on a side where they're not going to be negative. All right, if I'm really speaking about the old teachings, the old teachings were put it on the left side no matter what. I always try to think of it as, okay, how can I move this to where I'm not going to have a negative that I've got to fool with, all right? So what I did was I said, okay, first off, I've got 3x here and I've got 2x here. They're both technically being added. If I move the 3x, I'm going to have to subtract it. That's going to leave me with 2x minus 3x. That's going to leave me with a negative x. I don't want that. All right. So what I did was I said, all right, so my first move is going to be to subtract 2x from each side. Okay. Now, here, 2x minus 2x, that makes 0. That's gone. But over here, we got 3x minus 2x. We're going to hang on to that for a minute because we're going to need it here in a second. All right. Now, 
I'm not going to write all this out because it's going to take too much time. But if you move one direction with your first set of combining like terms, you have to go the opposite direction with the second set. What I mean is, you know how I moved the 2x over to the left the first time? I went right to left with that one. So I went that way first. That means that you must move the 5 from the left to the right. Because if you don't, if you go right to left twice, everything is going to be on the same side of the equals and it's not going to work. All right. So since I went right to left the first time, I've got to go left to right the second time. I've got a minus 5. That tells me that to get it to zero out, I need a plus 5 on both sides. That's gone. That stays. And we went over here. I know this is a big mess, but it'll make sense in a minute. So cleaning up our mess, we still have our equals. On the left, we have 3x minus 2x. On the right, we have 9 plus 5. Well, 3x minus 2x makes a 1x, or just an x. And then 9 plus 5 makes a 14. And we'll go ahead and bring our equals down. So that leave, that's why we're left with x equals 14. Combine the terms with the same variable. Combine, combine the terms without a variable. Make sure they're on different sides, and you're good to go. All right? Yeah, these, are, these take a little bit. But you, know, you can always go back and watch the video for this if you need a, need a refresher. Highly recommended to do that. I should have it uploaded sometime this evening. All right, same thing here with number 31. Okay, if I rewrite 31, it initially said 5x plus 12 equals 4x minus 1. All right, that's what it initially said. Now, to solve this, what I did was, again, I, you know, you always want to move the ones with the variable first. This is kind of a habit to help you get this uh, in a pattern. I got a 5x. I got a 4x. Neither one of them are negative. They're both being added, in other words. So I know that if I were to move that 5x, I'd be left with a negative variable. I don't want a negative variable because it's going to add a step. That's why you don't want it. So what I did was I said, since I don't want to move the 5x to the right, I'm going to move the 4x to the left. So it's being added. I need to subtract it. That's gone. It shows back up over here. Going to keep that where it's at. Now, since I went right to left on the first one, I've got to go left to right on the second one. That's gone. That stays. So now, clean it up. Going to keep my equals. 5x minus 4x, that's another 1x. Going to keep the equals. And then negative 1 minus 12 is going to make negative 13 when you subtract. All right. So there's that one. And then, uh, same thing here. I'm not going to beat this to death anymore. You can go back and check those as you will. All right, let's hop over to the quick review pages. Oh, there's, sorry, there's more, there's more notes. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Solving equations with division or multiplication. So yeah, these are the ones I was kind of previewing where it's single step equations, but now it's with uh, multiplying and dividing. So like on number five, the initial problem said 4x equals 36, right? Divide both sides by 4 because it's being multiplied and you get 9. Same thing with 7y equals negative 28. Divide both sides by 7 you get negative 4. Negative 9x equals 16. All right, this one's a problem because you can't divide 16 by 9, right? So sometimes you have to look at the directions and see if it says, hey, leave this as a fraction, leave it as a decimal, make it a mixed number, whatever you need to do. Sometimes it may not even tell you anything and you just kind of have to look at the answer choices. Um, but when you do this one, 16 divided by 9, that's just going to make negative 16 over 9. Or I don't know what it is if you divide it, but if you make it a mixed number, 9 goes into 16 once with 7 left over and you're good to go. And here's some more down here 
with uh, dividing by negatives and you know dealing with decimals and things of that sort. Okay, so yeah, here is where this is in the uh, notes part two uh, folder. So yeah, this is like the ones I was showing you where it's single step but with multiplying. Now, <clears throat> this is single step with dividing. Again, the rules for dividing fractions comes in. When you're dividing by a fraction, flip it over and multiply by it. So if we're looking at number 21 where it says 5 eighths x equals 5, what you do is you say, okay, if 5 eighths is being multiplied by x, I've got to divide by 5 eighths to get it off of there. And when I divide by 5 eighths, I actually multiply by 8 fifths, right? And 5 eighths times 8 fifths, all four of those numbers are going to nuke each other out. So you're just left with an x, and on the right, you're going to have 5 times 8 fifths. You could take that to say 40 over 5 to leave you 8, or you could just cross out the 5s, and it'll leave you 8 that way. But the, again, the important thing to remember with these is up here at the top, where it says... When dividing by a fraction, flip it over and multiply by it. All right? When dividing by a fraction, flip it over and multiply by it. So looking at 23, you've got 2 fifths y equals 4. That says 2 fifths times y equals 4. Since it's being multiplied, you have to divide it to get rid of it. You're going to divide by 2 fifths, and when you divide by a fraction, you flip it over and multiply by it. So you're actually going to multiply both sides by 5 over 2. 2 fifths times 5 over 2 wipes that out. So your right side is going to be left with 4 times 5 over 2. Again, if you wanted to make this, say, 20 over 2 and then reduce that to 10, you can. Or if you want to cross-reduce here to make it 2 times 5 and get 10, both ways work just fine. Now, 25 is a little bit different because you've got fractions on both sides. So with this one, you've got 3 fifths in equals 3 fourths. Same rules apply. You've got to divide by 3 fifths to get that off of there. When you divide by 3 fifths, you're going to multiply by 5 thirds to remove it. So that's gone. N remains on the left. On the right, you got 3 fourths times 5 thirds. If you look diagonally to see if you can chop anything down, the threes are gone. You got 5 over 4 or 1 and 1 fourth. And I know I'm going a million miles an hour. I apologize. If you need to, when you watch the video later, just put it on like 0.5 speed or something. I'll probably sound like a Muppet, but uh, at least it'll go a little bit slower. I'm just trying to get through these uh, two lessons. And this one's big. It's a big lesson. 27, you had negative 2 ninths x equals 4 fifths. Same rules apply with negatives. They just travel with you. All right, so when you're dividing by negative 2 ninths, you're going to multiply by negative 9 halves. So you put all that over there. Make sure you keep track of everything. And again... Look for the directions if they tell you, you know, put it in this form, put it in that form. If they don't tell you, then look at the answer choices and that'll give you a clue. Now, 29, we had one involving a mixed number, okay? Same thing. One half x means one half times x. You're going to divide by one half, which means that you're actually going to multiply by two. So that's where you get to the um, negative... Uh, I don't know what's going in there. All right. The negative two fourth, ne uh, sorry, negative two and one fourth times two. The best bet is to take this, oh, didn't turn the pan on. To take this, oh, that is way too big. I'm messing with this thing too much. Let's try the third take. Take the negative two and one fourth and make it improper. So the way that you make it improper, keep your negative out to the side. Four times two is eight. 8 plus 1 makes 9. Multiply on the way up, add when you get to the top. Then you've got fraction, fraction. You can see, you can look diagonally to see if anything will reduce or uh, cancel out. You got a 2 and a 4, so that's how we come up with negative 9 halves. So the big takeaway from this notes page is that sometimes you're going to have to divide by a fraction, right? If it's being multiplied, you divide by whatever it is to cancel it out. If it's a whole number, great. You know, it's going to take like two seconds. But if it's a fraction, you have to think, you have to change your thinking. And also remember, right here in the middle, when, ah, for Pete's sake, when dividing by a fraction, flip it over and multiply by it. That's the big thing that, uh, to remember for that. All right? 
Okay, next page. Okay, so this is using inverse operations, or in other words, two-step equations uh, with these. Okay, so by two-step equations, what it means is you're going to have uh, you're going to have multiplying and dividing, or not sorry, not and. Uh, multiplying or dividing and adding or subtracting. All right, so there's going to be a, there's going to, if it's a two-step equation, you got a part that's being multiplied or divided and a part that's being added or subtracted. Okay, that's what that means. So I had that written right there if I'd bothered to read my own notes. I just wasted three minutes. Hell, Lord, it happens. Okay. The initial problem in the notes says 15x minus 10 equals 35. That was the initial problem, okay? 15x minus 10 equals 35. So you can see where your two operations are. 15x, 15 times x, right, minus 10. So there's your subtraction. All right. Now, Again, our ultimate goal is still the same. We want that variable by itself. Nothing being added or subtracted, nothing being multiplied or divided. So you know how order of operations goes, parentheses, exponents, multiplying and dividing, adding and subtracting. So like the regular normal order of operations has adding and subtracting being last. This is inverse operations. You're going the other way. So if adding and subtracting happens last, if you're doing it normally, if you're working it backwards, adding and subtracting is the first thing you look for. Because you're going, instead of going you know, down the list, you're going up the list this time. So that being said, I see a negative 10. So, or not a negative 10, a minus 10. You can use it like a negative 10. It's kind of interchangeable. Uh, so I see a minus 10. I was like, okay, got to get rid of that. If I'm going to zero that out, I've got to add 10. Okay, that's gone. Showed back up over here. So everything you still have, go ahead and bring it on down. Okay, so I've got my 15x. I've got my equals. And then 35 plus 10 makes 45. 15x equals 45 is not your answer. You're not done yet because that x is still not by itself. x still has 15 multiplied by it. So if it's being multiplied, you have to divide by 15 to remove it. All right, if it's being multiplied, you divide by it. And if it's a whole number, you just go ahead and divide. 15 divided by 15 crosses that out. I've got my x left, I've got my equals left, I've got 45 divided by 15 left. So x comes down, equals comes down, and then 45 divided by 15 gives me a 3. So my answer for all this is x equals 3. Now, something I haven't mentioned yet. If you go through all this and you're not entirely certain that, you're, that 3 is your answer, Take that 3, plug it back in for that x, do your order of operations, and see if you get 35. And you will. So you'll be in good, you'll be in good shape. All right, let's look at another one. We may not look at all of these to try to save a little bit of time, um, but we'll try to look at most of them. So like on number 9 here, the initial problem said 6x minus 9 equals negative 12. So same rules apply. Take care of your adding and subtracting, then do your multiplying and dividing, because again, you're working backwards. I see minus 9, that means I've got to do plus 9 to get rid of that, but it's an equation, got to do plus 9 on both sides. So, <clears throat> 6x comes down, equals comes down, negative 12 plus 9 makes negative 3. So now I'm at 6x equals negative 3. 6x means 6 times x, got to divide by that 6 to get rid of it. x equals negative 3 over 6, or x equals negative 1 half. All right, number 11, same thing. It initially said negative 9x equals 3x minus 10. So this one's different than the last two because it's got two terms with a variable, all right? And they have the same variable. 
So what you do is, well, all right, well, this just goes back to combining like terms. I'm just going to take that 3x, subtract it off, and move it to the other side. I've got negative 9x minus 3x equals negative 10. I'll put that together, divide by 12, boom, I'm done. What happened is this number 11 is the equivalent of if this had said um, negative 9x plus 0. I don't know why on earth I put a 10 there. I guess I was looking at the other one. So if there's a 0 there, there's nothing for that 10 to go with, so you just leave it. All right. All right, over here, the initial problem said 14x minus 10 equals 18. So I have a minus 10. I'm going to plus it to cancel it out on the left, move it over to the right. 14x equals 28. Now I've got 14 times x. Got to divide by 14 on both sides, and x equals 2. Okay, so these are like the ones we saw on the last set of pages. It's just, you know, on these, the variable is not always going to amount to a 1. So 19 says 18 minus 2x equals 4x plus 6. So again, try to keep your variable positive if you can. It'll save you a step. Now, <clears throat> so what I did on 19 was I looked and I saw, okay, negative 2x on one side, 4x on the other side. Uh, if I move the negative 2x by, or, you know, if you think of it as like a minus 2x, if I move minus 2x by adding it, then on the right, I'll be okay. All right, I'll, I'll still stay positive. So that's gone. Ew. Let's turn the marker back on. So that's gone. We're keeping this. All right, we're also keeping our equals. All right, now, I went left to right the first time. Okay, so if I go left to right the first time, I can't go left to right again, otherwise everything's going to be on the same side and it's going to be messed up. So I had a plus 6 here. I need to get rid of that, so I'm going to minus 6. And then it shows up over here. I'm going to keep that. So everything that you got circled, keep it. Now let's bring it down. So 18 minus 6, there's where my 12 came from. Bring down my equals, bring down my 6x. 12 equals 6x, divide both sides by 6, x equals 2. That doesn't say 0.2, that was a, a, a smudge on the paper, just ignore that. 21, same thing, it said uh, 9 minus, uh, did it say 9? Yeah, 9 minus 8x equals 3 minus 2x, so what I did was I moved the, oh dear, I messed that one up. because that should, that should be a negative 6. can't believe I just now noticed that. So, See how easy it is to lose a negative? I did. There's no foolproof way to not, keep, to not lose a negative. I, I lost it, now the whole thing's shot. So just forget that one. Let's move on to 23 then. 5z plus 6 equals 3z minus 2. So now I'm going to subtract 3z from both sides. All right. So that's gone. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep my equals. If I went right to left the first time, got to go left to right the second time. So plus 6, I'm going to subtract 6. That's gone. And I'm going to keep negative 2 minus 6. All right. Positive 5z minus 3z, that's going to be 2z. I'm going to bring down my equal. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. So 2z equals negative 8. Divide both sides by 2. z equals negative 4. There you go. All right. Yeah, okay. Whew. You can tell it's about to rain outside. Back of my knee is about the size of a walnut. Yuck. All right, so again, the main thing here, inverse operations, do your adding and subtracting first before you do your multiplying and dividing. All right, last page, I think this is just word problems, maybe. Yeah, this is word problems from an old book, can't help us, so we're just going to leave that alone. All right, <clears throat> wait a minute, actually, let me look at that again. I might have been too hasty. Mm. 
Yeah, I think we can use this one. Okay. So this problem from this book said you have a 16 foot piece of wood and you're going to cut it into two pieces. All right. One piece is 5.5 feet longer than the other piece and it wants to know how long is each piece. All right. Ah, I can turn the blasted marker on. All right. So, you got to do two things. This teaches you how to assign variables. Okay. You're going to have two pieces, right? You're going to have a shorter piece and you're going to have a longer piece. If you know that the longer piece is five and a half feet longer than the shorter piece, then your shorter piece is the what you don't know, right? The shorter piece is what you don't know and anything you don't know gets a variable, okay? So the shorter piece, we don't know how long it is. All we know is that the longer piece is five and a half feet longer than it. So that means if the shorter piece is X and the longer piece is five and a half feet longer than that, then it's X plus 5.5. So you had a 16 foot long piece of wood. You're going to cut it into two pieces, but one of them is five and a half feet longer than the other one. So the shorter one, we don't know it, but we know that the longer one's five and a half feet longer than that. So that means once we find the shorter one, we add five and a half feet to the longer one and we got it. So the way that we do that is we kind of put all this together and set it equal to 16. Okay. So the shorter piece, let me do these in a different color. So the shorter piece, which is X is going to go here. The longer piece, which is X plus five and uh, X plus 5.5 is going to go here. So let me do this, make it all colorful and pretty. All right. So the shorter piece X plus the longer piece, which is X plus 5.5 equals 16. All right. So now it just goes back to combining like terms. We got two X's, right? So let's just put them together. So X plus X, that's going to make two X, right? Then you just bring everything else on down. So 2x plus 5.5 equals 16. To solve this, you do inverse operations. If I'm trying to find what x is, first I've got to subtract off 5.5, which is what happened right here, right? And then once I've got the subtraction done, if I'm trying to find x, I've got to divide both sides by 2, right? So 10.5 divided by 2, oops makes 5.25. Right, that's where that came from. Now, where folks have messed up on this in years past is the question over here said the length of each one, right? X is 5.25. That's only one of the pieces, right? That is the shorter piece, right? If you want to find a longer piece, you got to add 5.5 to that. All right. So the shorter piece is 5.25 and then 5.25 plus 5.5 makes 10.75. Okay. So, and we'll see more examples of this in the uh, student copy, but yeah, assigning variables. You got two pieces. Don't know one of them. You know, one of them is five and a half more than the other one. The one you don't know, make that X. The other one, what you don't know, plus 5.5, set it equal to 16. Then just, you know, go to town. All right. This one below it, uh, eh, I'm not going to worry about that one. It's going to take too long. We're kind of crunching on time as it is anyway. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the quick review pages. Then we'll look at the main concept previews. And we're going to go through these pretty quick so we can try to get to the finance part as well. All right, this is just all definitions. You can check that one out on your own. Okay, so uh, some of the stuff that you're also going to see deals with uh, number lines, graphing things on a number line, things of that sort. So some, you know, some stuff that's completely different. Um, when you're putting things in order on a number line, remember that the negatives always go, always go before zero, the positives always come after zero, all right? Uh, so like if you had negative two, one, zero, and two and a half, 
just kind of set you up a number line, throw them on there, and you're good to go. Inequalities, less than and greater than. Remember, it opens to the larger number, points to the smaller number, eats the larger number, runs away from the small, I don't know, whatever they told you to help you remember that. Um, just remember that if you have a positive and a negative, the positive is always bigger. If you have two positives, the one further away from zero is bigger. If you have two negatives, the one closest to zero is bigger. So like if you look at negative three and negative five, negative three is closer to zero, so it's technically considered the bigger number. I always told people to think of it like this way, which one's better, owing somebody three dollars or owing somebody five dollars? Owing somebody three dollars is a lot better, right? So there you go. Absolute value is just how far away it is from zero, all right? So that's why uh, if you have two numbers, one's negative, one's positive, but they have the same absolute value, they're both the same distance away from each other. It's a whole idea of what we've been doing with the canceling out, right? If we had negative 10 and we used a plus 10, it's because they're both the same way, same distance from zero, and if you put them together, they're going to meet at zero. So that's where that came from. Now, unlike C here, the negative absolute value of negative 5, what it means is, you take the absolute value of negative five, and then you just bring that negative on down. They even drew an arrow. You just tack it on, okay? An opposite of a number means you're going to basically multiply it by negative one. So if you have negative six, multiply it by negative one, get positive six. If you have positive nine, multiply it by negative one, get negative nine, right? Uh, adding two sign numbers, we kind of went through all of that with the, uh, you know, alike add, different subtract, all that good stuff. Just make sure that if you're doing absolute values and things like that to make, to make your adjustments. All right. So this is just more with your adding and subtracting of your sign numbers and multiplying and dividing. So remember with uh, adding and subtracting, alike add, different subtract. Multiplying and dividing though, same sign positive, different sign negative. All right, so if you have two positives or two negatives, they're gonna be positive, but if you have any differences, it's gonna be negative. And the same rules apply for dividing them. Order of operations, we should know the order of operations by now, but in case you need a refresher, it's just right over here underneath where it says 9.4. I don't remember which one I just opened. I think it was not that one, yeah. All right, so evaluating expressions, this just kind of goes back and tells you, you know, hey, if one's got one variable, one's got another variable, or no variable, you can't put it any further together. Um, determining whether a number is a solution of an equation, that just means checking your answer, all right? Using the addition property to solve an equation, that's just, uh, you know, uh, inverse operations with adding and subtracting. Multiplication property is inverse operations with multiplying and dividing. That's all that is. And this last one here kind of goes back and goes over the distributive property, turning things into word phrases like that piece of wood problem that we just did. Uh, solving equations with, step, with several steps. <clears throat> this just means like two-step equations and things like that. Okay, let's look at the student copies for this before we go into the finance part. I'm going to try to do the finance part really quickly um, so that we don't... If we can get the finance part done, then next week when we come in, we'll just do a, a, a review for our final and then we'll be done. All right, so part one preview. Okay, each one of these has 20 questions, but they should go pretty fast, okay? Oh, why did you put it on the other computer screen trying to make my life more difficult? I did not mean to do that. Okay, so question one. Graph the numbers on the number line. So, you know, for ones like that, it would help if you did your own number line, put those numbers on there, and then, see, you know, see which number line matched yours up. Or if you don't want to do that, just, you know, look and see which ones are the closest, the closest aligned. Uh, also, <clears throat> I had a student that is, a, that is uh, currently a uh, public school student, and, uh, you know, they have the Chromebooks and the Zscaler and all this bunch of stuff that can kind of interfere with Moodle. When you're doing these problems, if the images don't load, uh, just pull up the student copy and you can look at them that way. All right. Question two, same thing. 
graph them on a number line and see like on this one, there was supposed to be a number line that showed up right here and there wasn't, but there was one here. You know, who knows? Three, absolute value. Four, find the opposite. Remember opposite is just you multiply it by negative one and you're good. Eight, same thing, find the opposite, multiply it by negative one. Six, add, I mean that's pretty straightforward. Seven, add or subtract as indicated. Eight, add or subtract as indicated. Nine, subtract. So a lot of these are just checking to see if you remember how to do addition and subtraction with signs. Uh, Ten, order of operations with fractions. Remember, if you're adding and subtracting fractions, you've got to have a common denominator. If you have a scientific calculator, it'll chew it up for you and you'll be fine. Eleven, multiply. Twelve, divide. Thirteen, divide. Fourteen, an ascending weather balloon starts taking air samples at a height of 33,000 feet and every 1,500 feet thereafter, what is its height when it takes the ninth sample? <clears throat> so this would be, uh, it's going to start at 33,000 and then uh, starts taking samples every 1,500 feet after that. So what's its height going to be when it takes its ninth sample. I think if I remember right, this one is just nine times 1,500 plus 3,000 and you'll be okay. Th uh, sorry, 33,000. I hope that's right. I'm kind of doing these quickly at a glance. 15, in 14 weeks, the value of Bob Treatment's day trading account uh, decreased by $476. What was the average weekly change in the value of the account? So in 14 weeks, it decreased by $476. A decrease is a negative, so negative 476 divided by 14, there you go. 16, order of operations. 17, order of operations. 18, order of operations. 19 and 20, order of operations. All right, now be careful with these. These look identical at, a, at first glance, but look at them closely. They are not, all right? Um, now, 19 and 20, I will tell you, these are the exception to the order of operations rule because they're written as a fraction. Ones that are written as a fraction, you have to simplify the top and you have to simplify the bottom before you do that division, okay? So that's part one of the algebra lab. All right, let's go look at part two. Again, like I said, sorry, they each have 20 questions, but there was a lot to cover in this chapter. Okay, so question one, substitute and find out the expression. Okay, so it tells you what the expression is, tells you what the variable values are, plug them in, order of operations, easy peasy. Two, same thing, tells you what it is, plug them in for order of operations, easy peasy. Three, it's a perimeter formula, but it tells you what the length and width are. Plug them in, order of operations, easy peasy. Number four, the expression for finding the area of a square is S squared, where S is the length of one side. Evaluate the expression when the length of one side is seven centimeters. So seven squared, boom. Five, same thing, just with a five. Six, solve the equation. So now we're starting to get into inverse operations, okay? So inverse operations on six, inverse operations on seven, inverse operations on eight, inverse operations on nine. Seven, eight, nine, and 10, single step equations. Sorry, yes, single, seven, eight, nine, and, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, single step. 11, you start getting into two step, okay? So you're gonna have, a, you're gonna have an addition and subtraction part, and then you're gonna have a multiplying and dividing part. 12, same thing, two-step. 13 has a combining like terms part, and then you're gonna do the two-step. Uh, let's see, 14, we start getting into a lot of combining like terms. So anything that you can put together, go ahead and put it together. So this one, you've already got everything on one side or the other, so you're, you're okay for 14. 15 though, 15 has, a absolute val or has an absolute value part and a distributive property part. So take care of the absolute value part first, then take care of the distributive property part, and then work it from there. That one's a little tough. 16, how would you write as an expression the product of a number and three? 
All right, so which one of those four options is showing multiplication? 17, translate the sentence into an equation and solve it. 24, more than the product of 2 and n yields 60. I will tell you this much without giving it away. If it says, turn the blasted marker on. If it says more than, it means 24 more than something that was there first. So it does not mean 24 plus when you write it. And that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to give it away. All right? Uh, because that order is incorrect. 18, solve the problem. This is like the piece of wood problem, okay? A wire is cut into two pieces with one piece 14 feet shorter than the other. The wire was 76 feet before it was cut. How long is the shortest length of wire? So in this one, again, the shortest length is going to be X. The longer piece, uh, oh no, sorry, hold on. Nope, I misspoke. My bad. The shortest, since you're subtracting this time, so the short one is going to be X minus 14. And then the longer one is just going to be x. So you're going to take both of those, add them together, set it equal to 76, and just do your, uh, do your work. All right, sorry, I misspoke on that one because I'm trying to hurry. All right. Uh, 19, a rectangular Persian carpet has a perimeter of 248 inches. The length of the carpet is 30 inches more than the width. What are the dimensions of the carpet? So same thing here. All right, rectangular Persian carpet, the length is 30 inches more than the width. So the width is just going to be W. The length is going to be W plus 30. All right. And then 20, what's the additive inverse of zero? In other words, what would you add to zero to make zero? It's a trick question. All right. Okay, let's see how quickly we can get through... Uh, the finance part. Hopefully it won't take too long. Can we do it in 30 minutes? We will see. Oh gosh. All right, let's go here. All right. Yeah, this one shouldn't take too long because I don't even have handwritten notes for it. It's just quick review. Okay. So a couple of things to talk about. So first, percent, of course, means out of 100. Percent proportion is the relationship of the part to the whole equal to the percent out of 100. We'll talk more about that in a minute. It's a big concept uh, for this, especially in, like if you ever take 143. Uh, percent equation, it's just kind of like the second step of the, per of the percent proportion. So it's a little bit different. Sales tax. So sales tax is a percent added to how much you're going to pay. Commission is a percent of how much you sell that you get as income. Discount is a percent that is taken off uh, of the original price before you pay it. <clears throat> we'll talk more about that. Percent increase or decrease. I always just called this um, percent change. All right, and uh, what it is, is there, there is a formula for this that we'll go over when we get there. All right, uh, interest, so simple interest is uh, indicated by this formula right here, I equals PRT. Interest is equal to principal times rate times time. Principal is how much you borrow or invest, if it's a savings account. Rate of interest is how much it uh, is going to earn you based off of that. And then uh, the rate is, uh, you know, the percentage, and then time is usually in years. Or time is meant to be in years, but of course these textbooks will sometimes give it to you as a fraction of a year to try to mess with you. So simple interest is only, it's just like uh, the interest is only calculated once, basically. Compound interest, it's, comp it's calculated monthly or yearly or quarterly, things like that. Um, so that's when it's, you know, basically when it's applied. So this is just kind of a quick overview. All right, formulas. Okay. Uh, so this is a good, important page to kind of keep track of. Um, 
So percent proportion, part to whole equals percent over 100. You can also call it as A over B equals P over 100. The percent equation is that the part is equal to the percent times the whole. Sales tax, again, the amount of sales tax is equal to the tax rate times the cost. Commission is equal to the rate of the commission times your sales. And then discount is the discount rate times the original price. Now the way that the sale price is calculated right here is the sale price is equal to the original price minus the discount, all right? Percent of increase uh, and decrease. So percent change, I'll just, let me do it in a different color, hang on. So percent change, and this is what you would use for uh, increase and decrease, all right? So I'm gonna give you the formula right now. Percent change is new, minus old divided by old times 100. New minus old divided by old times 100. You might want to write that down because I don't know for sure if it shows up in other, any of these other quick review pages. I want to say, I think I put it within the questions themselves, but you know what they say when you assume. So I, I don't want to assume that I did. Um, all right, so let's keep on going through this. Yeah, get away here, bug. So again, percent change is equal to new minus old divided by old times 100. Everybody got that one down? All right, sorry, we're kind of cooking with hot Crisco here, but we got to hurry. <clears throat> um, okay, this just kind of walks you back through how to change a percent into a decimal or a decimal into a percent. And this is how to write a fraction as a percent, and it's kind of using the percent proportion. You cross multiply and divide, and you're good. All right, so you can come back to that uh, as needed. The percent proportion, okay? So <clears throat> you got uh, the part, the whole, and the percent. Any one of those three things could be missing at any given time. All right, so if it says something like use a percent proportion to solve for the unknown value, when the part is 30, the whole is 50, find the percent. So the part always goes over the whole. Some other textbooks refer to this as amount and base, amount over base. Uh, part would be the amount, whole would be the base. So you can use that one too um, if you like it better. But you cross multiply and divide to find any part that's missing for this, whether it's the percent, whether it's the part, or whether it's the whole. Case in point, all right? Identifying the percent, whole, and part in a problem. Could, these questions could be presented to you in any number of ways. For instance, 10% of the 500 pies is how many pies? And it tells you which one is which there, uh, and the same for the rest of these. All right, so an example down here, a liquid mixture in a tank contains 35% distilled water. If 28 gallons of the distilled water are in the tank when it is full, find the capacity of the tank. So <clears throat> this is saying, all right, my percent is 35. Part of this is distilled water at, at 28 gallons. So how much of it does it hold all together? So 35 is your percent, 28 is your part. That means that the whole is missing. So you cross multiply, all right, and then, well they reduced it first, but whatever. So you cross multiply, you get 7x equals 560, divide by 7, and you get 80. So cross multiply and divide is how you solve the percent proportions. Cross multiply and divide. All right, was that the last page? Oh shoot, I'm still on the marker. No, it was not the last page. I didn't think so. All right. Percent equation, a little bit different. Find 20% of 220 applicants. So in this case, we had the percent. We had how many total applicants there were. We did not have the part. So you have to find the part. Now, one thing about this one that makes it a little bit trickier than the percent proportion is when they give you the percent in a percent equation problem, you have to make it a decimal. You don't have to for percent proportion because it's literally over 100, so you don't have to mess with it. But since you're not doing fractions on this one, you gotta convert your percents to decimals by dividing by 100. 
So it gets a little bit trickier. I don't think you have a lot of these. We'll look here in a second. <clears throat> Solving application problems with proportions. So sales tax, uh, commissions, and discount. You've got good examples here. It says the price of a 46 inch TV is $6.99. Sales tax is 5%. Find the sales tax. So that is showing you how to apply the sales tax. A lot of times though, and especially in 143, that question does not say find the sales tax. That question says, how much did you pay for that TV? So that's when you find the sales tax and then add it back. So just be on the lookout for that. If you're a realtor and you sold a $92,000 house at 3% commission, then how much did you make? Turns out not a whole lot. Well, I mean, depending on, you know, everything's relative, but, uh, you know, if that's like, you know, you only sold one house for the year, that's not good. Um, discount and sale price. Okay. So discount is found by taking that percentage of the price and then subtracting it from that price to get the sale price. All right. Okie dokie. Moving right along. Moving right along. All right. I put in here additional notes on percent from this book in case you uh, wanted them. You can go through those and it just kind of shows you some different ways to uh, apply percents. Now, one thing I've got here, okay? Oh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> Lots of uh, formulas here, okay? So you can, uh, I had it written on a board so you can go back and check those out. Uh, they might be written in a way that's more appealing, you know. 6.6, uh, you know, some folks were having trouble finding this in the other folder, so I just kind of copied it and put it in here again. Okay, compound interest table. All right, so the way that this works is it says, let's say that you put $1,000 in the bank, all right, and it's going to be compounded for 12 months at 4%. Okay. If you wanted to know how much you had, so here's how that, here's how it works. Let's write down our particulars. So principal, ah, for pity's sake, it's not what I wanted. <clears throat> so the principal is going to be a thousand dollars. The rate is going to be, um, what did I say? 4%. And then the time, let's say it was um, uh, one year, all right? Okay, so what you do is you say, okay, 4%, that's, well, you can't see that at all, can you? 4%, that's right here. Uh, one year, and say if this is in months, all right, let's treat it like it's in months. So that's going to be 12 months. So 4%, 12 months. I'm going to find where these two pieces of info meet. So that means I'm going to take my $1,000 <coughs> and multiply it by a factor of 1.6010. Now tell me how much money I got after that, right? Because what this does is it, <clears throat> excuse me, golly, figures up how much uh, interest you earn on it. All right, Whew, my throat went dry, oh, too much talking. I left this in here. There was initially some compound interest questions in here. I can't remember if there are still. So we'll look at the uh, <coughs> student copy. Ugh. All right, and then here is some, oh, here is um, percent of change or, uh, yeah, no, this is how you find the increase. Yeah. Simple interest here. <coughs> Sorry. Can't, I can't, uh, shake this dry throat. Boy, it sure showed up at a great time while I'm recording a video. Okay. So three ways of finding the compounded amount. <clears throat> you can calculate it by hand. Who on earth wants to do that, right? Nobody wants to do that. 
multiply the original deposit by 100% plus the compounded rate. So, you know, if it was after three years, you would comp you know, add that three times. But use the compound interest table to find the interest on one dollar, and then multiply the value by the principal. So, <coughs> I misspoke earlier, where this was in uh, months. Uh, you could use it like months, like say, let's say that your interest was compounded monthly. So you could use that, but let's treat it like years instead. So what this table was made off of is that somebody took $1 and invested it at all these different percentages for all these different amounts of years. So like say, if you put $1 in a bank for 5.5% for five years, that means that after those five years, you're going to have $1.28, basically. Because, I mean, you're, the uh, interest is only being calculated at $1. So it's not really, you know, that great. It's building off your principal. So that's what all these came off of. So going back to that one that we just did, let's say that if you put in $1,000 uh, at 4% for 12 years, Let's say you left it in there for 12 years. So that's going to be 1,000 times 1.6010, all right? Well, multiplying this by 1,000 is going to move this one, two, three decimal places. So you'll have $1,601. So that's how the compound interest table works. So the table is the easiest way to deal with these compound interest problems if they're in your... Uh, <coughs> um, uh, questions. I can't remember if I left them in there or not. Okay, there was a question in there uh, dealing with finding and applying a discount that was tripping a lot of people up. I want to say it was number three on the student copy. I went ahead and I worked it out for you here. So you can use this as a guide. All right. Uh, okay. This is all the old stuff, so that's probably not even showing up on y'all then. All right, so let's go and look at the main concept preview. Whew. Okay, so the first question that shows up is kind of just like a thinking question. It says, the price of an item is reduced by 20% in a sale. Two weeks later, the price is increased to 20% more than the sale price. Do you think that the item has been restored to its original price? If not, do you think it is now higher or lower? Explain your thinking. So what I've always told people in years past, make a hypothetical example. Let's say that the original price was $100. All right, let's just say it was $100. You can put whatever you want. But let's just say it's $100, okay? So what I would do first is I would say, okay, well, what is uh, going to be the discount price of 100 minus 20% of 100? Because that's how you find the discount, right? Get that number, okay? And then that is your sale price. Then, secondly, it said the price was increased. I guess uh, demand went back up, all right? It was increased. So <clears throat> whatever answer that you got from your first problem, okay, whatever, whatever price that was, you're gonna increase it plus, or you're gonna increase it by 20% of whatever it was, okay? After you do that, compare them. You uh, will compare it and see, uh, and, and, and see how it goes. And then you, uh, it, it is kind of, it is a, uh, it's an essay. So you can just type in your, your thinking uh, there. All right, and uh, so whatever number that you get after you do this, maybe you don't want to use 100, maybe you just want to use like 50 or 25 or whatever. Whatever number you get from that, plug it in here, and then add 20% of whatever that is to it, 
and see if you get the same thing. See if you get back what you started. And then if you didn't, why do you think you did? If you did, why do you think you did? All right, so that's, uh, that'll help you all out on that one. Okay, commission, uh, you sold, you made 820, you sold $820 worth of stuff. Your commission rate is 6%, so 6% of 820, that's how much you take home. Same thing here, you sold $414 worth of stuff. You keep 2% as a commission rate. How much money did you make? Four, find the uh, amount or rate of discount for the sale price after the discount. Oh, okay, so I see what, I see what happened here. All right, so when I initially made this as a worksheet, this here was number three because that essay question was at the end. For some reason, whenever Moodle updated, it put that question at the front. So this is not for number three, this is for number four. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> All right, so it's not for number three, it's number four. You'll figure it out, just match up the numbers, you'll be fine. Okay, <clears throat> moving right along to finish this up. Okay, so use that big picture with this one and you'll be okay. Question five, the regular price of a double roll of wallpaper is $23 during the May sale. It was discounted 35%. What is, a, what is the sale price? So again, this is just gonna be 23 minus 0. 0.35 of 23. That's all you gotta do, all right? Six, enrollment in a business seminar increased from 63 to 76. What was the percent of increase? So remember, percent of increase is new minus old divided by old times 100. So this is going to be 76 minus 63 divided by 63 times 100. There you go. Question seven, find the simple interest. So with simple interest, all you're going to do is take 900, multiply it by the decimal form of 6% and multiply it by two. So if I equals PRT, then I equals 900 times 0 0.06, there's a decimal there, times two. It's a sloppy looking two. But uh, remember, interest always works off of time in years. If they give it to you as a fraction, it may help to adjust it, all right? So that's how you apply the uh, simple interest. Uh, same thing here. So it says time in years is one third. So do one third times 12 uh, to get, uh, or you know, multiply it by 12 to get your years and then you'll be okay. Find total amount on the loan near cent. So again, simple interest, uh, 703% five years. Uh, total amount on the loan, uh, Actually, these might be, these are, sorry, these are not, yeah, I think they're simple interest. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, okay, so if it says use the compound interest table, then use the compound interest table. This is, um, okay, so these are saying interest plus principal. So use, so what you do is you're going to do the 700 times 0 0.03, times five, you're gonna get that number, okay, whatever that number is, and then that number is gonna be added back to your principal or your 700. I was going too fast, I flew too close to the sun. So figure out what your, when it says interest plus principal right here, find your interest and then add it back to your principal. Same thing on number 10. Find your interest, add it back to 1550. Uh, same thing on number 11. Find your interest, add it back to 1370. 12, find the compound amount for the deposit if interest is compounded day, uh, annually using the compound interest table on page 453. So it says, what are you going to have after if you put in $1,500 at 4% for two years? So that's going to be $1,500 times, let's say 4% for two years. So 1,500 times 1.08, yeah, 1.0816. Well, that's all you gotta do. Uh, same thing for 13, same thing for 14. 
And that's it. We, did, we crammed two weeks worth of lessons into one week so that next week we can review for the final. Whew. All right. So what that means for y'all is that, let me go back over here to my little schedule. <clears throat> so right now, both of these are open. So you'll have to do the two parts in section 10 and then the one part in section 11. Uh, earlier starts you get on it better because section 10 there's 40 total questions and then with section 11 there is 14 so you're looking at like 54 questions this week so the earlier start the better again if you run into any problems just shoot me a Moodle message and we'll get you back on track a couple of things I wanted to point out to you while I got you so assignment redos test retakes cumulative review and test prep so next week is our redo week again. We're gonna have a redo week. Anything that you need to do, re get redone, just uh, you know, put it together in a list, let me know. Um, if it was initially late, like if you missed the deadline on it, max credit of 80. If it was, if it was turning on time, you can do it for full credit. Uh, also next week opening up, there is going to be a practice final, okay? If you want to, it's the only extra credit I offer for this class, you can complete it, I'll grade it like I would any other assignment, and I'll take 10% of that and add it up to, or add it to your grade up to 100. I can't go over 100. So I put in here like if you get an 85, you'll get eight and a half points added to your thing. Um, the final opens Monday, all right? It'll open Monday. I would recommend that you don't do it until after we've met on the 23rd to review for it, okay? But if you think that you are good enough to, you know, do, you know, study on your own and go ahead and take a crack at it, by all means, go ahead. Just let me know so I'll know not to expect you to show up for class, all right? The final opens on the 22nd. It is due April 30th at 11.59 p.m. It will close at a 11.59 p.m. on April the 30th, whether it is completed or not. So please make sure that you don't forget to do that. Uh, the optional practice final, <clears throat> it is um, a document, okay? So every bit of work for the practice final has to be shown, okay? Every bit of work or it's not going to get graded. Every single bit of work has to be shown, whether you do it within the, the worksheet or if you do it on paper, all right? So, and I've had people in years past email me the practice final and it's just a page full of answers, so I didn't do anything with it. You gotta do the work if you want to have it counted. And then, of course, the final will open up next week, but I would, you know, if you wanna just go ahead and take a crack at it on Monday and get it done, then, you know, if you go ahead and do the final, you don't have to come back here just let me know, shoot me an email or a Moodle message. But if you want to come into class, go over some stuff, we'll meet on Tuesday. Just, you know, let me know either way so I'll know to look for you. All right? Okay. We're in the home stretch. Thank goodness, because my shoulder is killing me. <laughs> all right. I'm done. If y'all are done, I know y'all are probably done. Sorry to keep y'all the full time this time, but um, 